today is the day. Big day on uh, Bull Bank Net Zero project here. We've got um, our insulation complete, our uh, air barrier complete, and today we get to use a, a blower door test to go around and analyze how airtight we got this home with our insulators. Um, there's no hiding here once you pressurize this building. If there's a pathway for air to come from outside to inside, we're going to see it and we're going to try and fix it. So when it comes to just standard construction in a home, the city benchmark is extremely low. It's kind of around 2.5, but you know, most homes can get uh, to two or one and a half air exchanges. And uh, our goal here would be to get at least to one air exchange. So after you put the drywall on, uh, usually that will tighten you up at least a half air exchange. And that would leave us at about a 0.5 air exchange per hour, uh, which is extremely airtight. Uh, the passive house standard is a 0.6 air exchanges per hour. Uh, so if we get to 0.5, I'll be happy here. Yeah, right, give me that tape. <laughs> oh dear. So right now we are uh, doing a positive uh, test because right now you can't get your score unless you do a positive test because what happens when we pressurize the building uh, for positive, it, it's pushing air outwards through this wall. So then the poly is going to stay on it. But when we do a negative test, when we're bringing air into the house, because it's just poly on the wall, there's no drywall, you run the risk of pulling the poly off the wall. So. We're gonna just do a positive test, get our score, and then uh, and then we're gonna go around. We're gonna fix all the leaks with a negative test, but with low pressure, and then we're gonna go back to a positive test and get our final score in the end, and see how uh, how much better we made this house in terms of air tightness through just going around and fixing the leaks here. So let's go. What do you guys think about part 1.9 was where we were at there? Yeah. Okay, so we got some work to do here. So right off the bat, we are 1.9 air exchange per hour in here. So uh, we've got at least a 0.9 that we're gonna try and tighten up here. So there's probably some uh, low hanging fruit somewhere here and we're, we're gonna go find it. But the great thing about this test is that uh, if we had not done it, we'd just move along and just assume that the details got done right. But now we get to know that, okay, there's some leaks somewhere, we gotta go find them. And now when we get to our final, we know that we found those leaks, we're able to get it down to a, a one air exchange is our target. And, uh, and if we don't get it there today, then we're going back through and we're gonna, we're gonna keep going until we get it there. You don't move on until you get to your target. So here's a great example of a, a massive air hole here. So uh, if you can imagine, probably, probably a 1.9 air exchange. Hey Steve, what do you, what do you think an air, 1.9 air exchange this house, like a, a hole like that in your house? Uh, it's probably a 12 by 12. 12 inch by 12 inch hole? So, so 12 by 12 hole in the house here right now, roughly. So this one here, you can see, you can see how much uh, air leak is here. So you can see my hand is right back there. It's because they're poly. Didn't go all the way over to that acoustic bead to catch that. Uh, so, um, you know, there's a lot of insulation behind here that's catching a lot of friction. So, you know, it is probably at least a one square inch hole here. I mean, I can feel the air coming through this whole uh, seam here. So there we go. Here we got another just small little nook, nick there. And uh, I put your, your hand there. You don't need to have an IR camera to know that thing's leaking air. I don't just do all the tops and just push in acoustic seals here. I don't know why, I just feel like I feel air moving, but maybe it's just the cold poly. Small penetration here, uh, not a big leak, but um, normally we just put some spray foam up in here and uh, that will seal her up, so there you go. Okay, we got another spot here where our insulator uh, cut the ceiling poly short of the plate poly here. As in the plate poly, yeah, it gets wrapped up. It gets installed by the framers, it gets wrapped up. We get an acoustic bead on the face there and then the ceiling poly comes down and it's supposed to go over top. But this one, in this particular situation, it's cut a little short of the acoustic bead there. So there's gonna be no compression, no air seal there. And if you look closely, you can see all our acoustics actually waving in the wind there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tape it from back here all the way to here. The, uh, the SIGA tape is an expensive product. It works extremely well 
to, to piece two pieces of material together. Um, the acoustic is very cost effective, that's why we try and use acoustic where we can. But in the situation what we have right here, to make this fix, I'm just gonna use SIGA tape and we're gonna move on here. Brent, do you know how much a roll of this tape is right now? $70. 70 bucks? That little fix right there, two bucks. So yeah, so one, one tip and one thing that we try and stress with our insulators is uh, when you put the acoustic on, you want a nice thick bead. Cause like I said, you wanna, you wanna view the acoustic as a gasket. And a gasket is only uh, useful underneath compression, but it's hard to get a lot of good compression when it's a very thin bead. So we've went through the majority of this house here now, uh, fixing all the little air leaks as you've probably seen. We retested, we're at about a 1.6 air exchange here. And like I said, after we get the drywall on, we're estimating we'll be about a 0.5 lower. So right now, if I just left it, we'd be at a 1.1 roughly when this project is uh, all done and set here. So um, that's not gonna be good enough for our project here. So we're gonna keep uh, digging deep and, and fixing air leaks here. So we identified a big air leak in our uh, spray foam uh, in our garage ceiling. So we're gonna get our spray foam contractor back for that patch those areas up and there's a few other details in here that we're going to fix up a little better and then we're going to get our blower door test uh, back out and we're going to retest the house there afterwards and see where we're at the blower door test is a relatively inexpensive process uh, you know for a few hundred bucks getting a person out to hook up a blower door test to tell you where you're at in your house it's extremely important that you get to where you need to be before you move on and if you got to spend a couple extra hundred bucks to make sure you get there well, then that's what you're going to do. Uh, and that's certainly what we're going to do here. So stay tuned. We're going to fix these air leaks up. We're going to come back and we're going to see where we're at. And hopefully we get that down to one air exchange before uh, drywall here. Where is, uh, is Steve upstairs? You want some cold coffee? <laughs> Day two of our blower door test here. So last uh, time we, we got it down to about a 1.6 after uh, we started off at a 1.9 and we discovered some big leaks out in our garage. To put it in perspective, what I'm talking about a big leak is the entire house is about a, a 10 inch square uh, hole that we're talking about right now. So we're talking, you know, uh, one square inch holes that we're, we're finding accumulation, you know, so it, it, they're not massive holes, but these, these are a big deal in terms of energy efficiency. So, well, that, that got it to 1.1. I think, um, I think that's a wrap there in my opinion, but I do think there's definitely some spots here that we need to just finish taping and, uh, things that aren't compressed or yeah. But yeah, it's looking good though. I think we're doing pretty good here. So in this house here, so obviously we did the two blower door tests and uh, Homes by Sorensen, we had three guys here, including myself, going around and with tapes and caulking and feeling spots while the blower door is on to see if air leaking. We got the IR camera going, we're investigating every single nook and cranny in here. We probably spent about, on average, I'd say each guy was here for at least three or four hours doing something. But those are hours spent that are very necessary for getting a product from just regular code built to uh, a very high performance airtight home. And uh, at the end of the day, that's what we're after here. You only get one shot at that. There's no going backwards. So you got to put the time in right now and feel really good about yourself before you move on. Uh, we got a few more small things that we're just going to tweak here before the uh, board officially goes on the wall, but we're not going to test it anymore until at the very end when we got all our finishes, all our drywall, all our everything complete in here. And with the power of editing, we are finished boarding here. Zero point four four is where we're at. Holy smokes! Here we go. That's better than what we were hoping for. So, uh, 
0.44. Whew. That's a, that's a tight house. 0.6 or better was what we were hoping for, and we're down to 0.44. So awesome result here at Homes by Sorensen's Net Zero Home.